Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And, excuse me, today I am coming at you with another paid request. Uh, once, good God, once again from Yule, excuse me, who wanted me to take a look at more uh, Asian films, Hong Kong action films, martial arts movies, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to be wrapping up this batch this go round of reviews with a couple Jackie Chan movies uh, first up <clears throat> excuse me again we are going to talk about uh, one that I have actually always really liked um, it's a little bit of a different kind of Jackie Chan movie but it still has the elements that make Jackie Chan who he is and we are talking about new police story again i have always really liked this movie i remember when this first came out here in america and being really excited i was like "Ooh, another police story movie great because at this point um i had seen and loved the first four police story movies and um i know it's not a part of that series it's kind of like a reboot whatever you want to call it a uh, spin-off whatever you want to call it but um, I still have always really liked this film. And I do wish that there was a better Blu-ray. I mean, this isn't bad. There is some some features. There's a making of. There's some, some stuff with Jackie Chan on here. But this movie came out almost 20 years ago. And it would be nice if, you know, like 88 Films or Eureka or somebody would get a hold of this. I know uh, both of them just did Super Cop. Maybe they'll do First Strike. That would be great, and then maybe we'll get this one, because I do think that this movie uh, needs a little bit more love. Because again, like I said, I'm a big fan of this movie. I've always really liked this one. I know people don't, and that's fine. You know, that's what makes the world the world, is you can like something different, and you can disagree, and you can still be friends. I know some people out there have a very difficult time understanding that, because they're fucking retarded, but that's okay. Um... Let them be retarded. Oh, well. But, you know, I was pretty excited when this one came in because not only did I get to do a specific video on this, but I got to watch the movie again. So there you have it. But before we jump into this, you already know what I'm going to say. Um, if anybody wants to contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, uh, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. And you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy. Just like they used to say, a Blockbuster. So thank you. And Blockbuster will play a part in this review. So another shameless plug, but this time for Blockbuster. So there you go. But before I do that, we'll do this. But new police story. Um, like I said, I really like this movie. Um, this was kind of the point in Jackie Chan's career where he was slowing down in a lot of, well, not... Physically, because he still does a lot of great fights and stunts in this movie. Can't complain about that. But I think this was kind of the point when gears were changing. Um, his American career was essentially over at this point. Uh, which, you know, maybe one day I'll do like a long form video on that. Because for whatever reason... The idiots in charge here in the American film system did not think that Jackie Chan could do a movie without someone else because every movie he did was a buddy movie. And don't get me wrong, I love Rush Hour 1 and 2. Those are definitely his best American films. I, I really like Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. Those are good movies. 
I like the tuxedo. I know a lot of people don't. I think it's a fun, goofy comedy. Uh, I thought him and Jennifer Love Hewitt had good chemistry together. The medallion is okay, but the problem is that they completely re-edited the entire movie, and you could tell when you watch it. And then other than that, I mean, if we're talking strictly American films, The Spy Next Door, I was not a fan of. I reviewed that because that was just... It was too late, number one. And number two, it was just The Pacifier with Jackie Chan. And it had lame... It was lame fucking movie. I did not like that movie. Um, the Foreigner sucked because The Foreigner... They market it and they hyped it up as a Jackie Chan movie. It's not really a Jackie Chan movie. He's the best part, but he's barely in the film. And Pierce Brosnan's accent, his Irish accent, sucks. And he's fucking Irish. Anyway. Um, I'm trying to think. Forbidden Kingdom sucked because, it, number one, it was way too late. The fact that it was PG-13, I don't think, worked. And, you know... That's not what people wanted to see. People wanted to see Jet Li and Jackie Chan kick the shit out of each other for two hours. Anyway, fuck that movie too. But his American career was basically over. And number one, I think that was because... Again, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Again, the, the studios didn't think that he could carry a movie on his own. Number two, he was very critical of the American filmmaking system. Before he started doing movies here, while he was doing movies here, and now years later, when he hasn't done a movie here, he's still very critical about it. I don't think that helped him, just saying. And then also, at the time, Hong Kong was changing in a lot of different ways, and I think that people were kind of like, all right, we've kind of seen Jackie Chan do everything. What more could he possibly do? And I think at this point, once you got to the 2000s, in his Hong Kong films, the the movies were changing. He wasn't, you know, he would do movies where he was the star, like this, or Accidental Spy. And, but he was also trying to change up his style, because he did a more dramatic film like this, which I like, because he gives a great performance. He did movies like Shinjuku Incident, which I've never seen, but it's a dramatic performance. So... You know, he was changing what he was doing, and the business had changed, especially in Hong Kong. So, you know, once you get to the 2000s, it's kind of up and down. Again, you would get a movie like Accidental Spy. Then you would get this. Then you would get Chinese Zodiac, which I like. Then you would get, he would come back here to occasionally do a movie, like Skip Trace, which I really like Skip Trace. Skip Trace is the real Rush Hour 3, as far as I'm concerned. Even though Rush Hour 3 is okay, it's grown on me. I, I don't think it's a great sequel, but it's got some good moments in it. Um, the best part of the movie is when they kick the shit out of Roman Polanski at the end, so there's that. But more on that later. So this is kind of like, not the twilight of Jackie Chan's career, but we're getting to that point because he was changing the movies that he was doing. Um... When I first saw this movie, I was like, cool, police story. There's going to be shootouts, and there's going to be action, and Jackie's going to be fighting. And yes, there is that in this movie, but this is more of a dramatic film. And I think that the marketing here, I don't know what the marketing was like in Hong Kong. I can't speak for that. But the marketing here made it seem like it was going to be like the first four police story movies. And again, yes, there is a good chunk of action. There's a lot of really good action in this movie that I quite like. But it's not the heyday of Jackie Chan. Once you got to the 2000s, I think that kind of faded off. I think that, that went away. Um, again, Accidental Spy is a lot of fun. I actually really like that movie. There's a German Blu-ray which has both versions of the film. I would like to get that. I do really like this. Um... Once you get to like the 2010s, I really like Skip Trace. Chinese Zodiac is fun, but then they be kind of his movies kind of became a dime a dozen, so to speak. So there you go. But it wasn't just because Jackie Chan was getting older; it was also because the market had changed and people like we saw Jackie Chan do everything in the 80s and the 90s. What more could he do? So there's that. But 
you know, before... So, again, he was starting to, to change what he was doing. He was starting to try different things, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. In this movie, I think that it works. So there's that. But before we get more into that, might as well get the plot out of the way. So Jackie Chan, obviously he's a cop because it's called Police Story. So he is a cop. He's uh, the leader of this elite unit in Hong Kong. And they are working on a case to bring down this group of bank robbers who are these young kids. They are really into video games and extreme sports. They're these daredevils, which I did like that. I thought it was cool. You find out later in the movie that these are all the children of rich people. Uh, the leader of the gang, who is actually played by Daniel Wu. Now, I fucked up and I lied to you guys again. Sorry, you guys know I lie all the time. Daniel Wu was just in a movie, uh, 2000 AD, that I reviewed. He was also in Purple Storm, which I reviewed. But I completely forgot that he's the fucking bad guy in this movie. So, I have seen movies with him in it. He's the leader. You find out that his dad is the police chief. And they're doing this to, like, rebel and get back at their parents and everything. So they start robbing these banks and everything. And Jackie Chan goes on TV and says, we're going to catch these guys in three hours. They set up this house of horror, which, honestly, I think is the best part of the movie, is the beginning. I'm not going to lie. Um, so Jackie Chan and his team go in. They get outsmarted. The entire team gets killed, except Jackie Chan's character, including the one of the cops is the brother of Jackie Chan's fiance. So, of course, he feels guilty. Uh, he takes a year off from police work, and he becomes a, a drunk, an alcoholic. Uh, one day, one year later, this guy shows up who's played by Nicholas C., who's been in a bunch of other movies. I've seen him before. And he is Jackie Chan's new partner. Um, and he tells Jackie Chan's character that the, the captain assigned you to the case. These guys are back. We got to get them. And Jackie Chan says, no, no, I'm done. Fuck this. And he tries to recoup. He rebuild his life. He tries to go back to his girlfriend. She doesn't really want him to come back, but he wants to because he still loves her. And one night when he's out on, on a bender... Uh, these punks show up, they steal this lady's purse, Nicholas C. gets one of them, Jackie Chan's character gets the other one, and it kind of wakes him up. And he comes back to want to solve the case, to want to bring these guys in to avenge the people that got killed. So they meet this guy who sets them up to take the fall to try to get these guys, and they see through it. These guys, the bank robbers, they keep committing these crimes. Jackie Chan and his care and his partner try to get one step ahead of them, so they do that. But they get in trouble because they go and get one of the one of the uh, or actually two of them. They they go and find two of the robbers. There's this bus chase, which is really well done. Uh, it reminded me of the bus chase from the first police story. Well, not really a chase, but you know what I mean. And they get in trouble. You find out that his partner is not really a cop. He's this guy that Jackie Chan uh, helped when he was a kid. You find that out at the very end of the movie that his dad was broke and destitute. He robbed a store. He got hit by a bus. The cops were like beating him and kicking him. Jackie Chan came in and helped him. He talked to him and he wanted to repay him the favor. So they get arrested, but... Uh, before that, the bad guys show up at the police station. Jackie Chan's fiance is there because she wants to take him back. There's some really emotional scenes there where they strap a bomb to her and they profess their love. They get the bomb off, but the bomb goes off anyway. So they arrest Jackie Chan and his buddy. They throw him in jail. Then you do get a little bit of comedy, which is nice. They get out, and it's comedic how they get out, and they stay one step ahead of the bank robbers because the bank robbers are going to rob the Bank of Hong Kong. So the Jackie Chan and his partner get there before them. They clear everybody out. They bring in the parents of these guys to fuck with them so they'll screw up, and they do. So the last, like, 30 minutes of the movie is them, you know, Jackie Chan and his partner... Uh, 
there we go, fighting throughout, like it's like a Lego land type of place, which is really awesome. I really like that fight. And they fight on top of a roof and his partner goes over the roof and he's getting choked and Jackie Chan has to save him and he does. And the very end of the film is he asks his girlfriend to marry him once again. She does and everything's okay. So I know I went through the entire movie, but I really like this film. I can't help it. Um, like I said, I first saw this when it came out in America in 2006. Um, saw it at Blockbuster. That's where now we're coming back to Blockbuster. It was at Blockbuster. Like I remember when this first got a DVD and I was like, cool, you know, a uh, new police story, another police story movie. So I was like, awesome. So I rented it, really liked it then. Um, I think I even bought the DVD when Blockbuster like got rid of the extra copies or it was going out of business because I had the DVD from Blockbuster and then I found this on Blu-ray. Um, I don't remember. I might have got this at Entertain Mart. I'm not back in Colorado. Not quite sure where I got it, but uh, I think that was there. And again, I, I was able, you know, I watched it. It is, this is available on YouTube for free for those of you that have never seen it. And it's, it's the English dub, which is nice because it does have the uh, Cantonese dub on here as well. Um, and it was fun to, to watch this movie again because I had not seen it in a little while. I think I watched it last year. If I'm not mistaken, I think I popped it in because I, I wanted to, to check it out. But it's, it's been a little bit since I've seen it. And, you know, again, it was really nice, of course, for a paid request to, to be able to watch this movie again and talk about it. And I still really like this. I think that this is a really underrated Jackie Chan film. I think it's one of his best acting performances. Again, especially the first, like, 30 minutes of the movie, I think is the best part when they establish the villains. There's a bit where this guy is going crazy and he starts wanting to shoot people. Jackie shows up. He's wearing two bulletproof vests because the guy's going to shoot him, and then he throws a grenade. Jackie catches the grenade. He throws it in the sewer, and it blows up. And then he goes on TV saying, you know, we're going to get these guys. And then the villains set them up. And then they go through, like, this house of horror. They have, like, these videos. And the cops are shooting it. And they think it's real. And then there's these dummies. And then the bad guys come out and shoot all the cops. Now, yes, it's a fucking movie. It's completely unrealistic. I know that. But it's a Jackie Chan film. I don't fucking care. Um, there's a really cool shot where Jackie's trapped in this room. And it's all these video game screens, and it's showing in video game form how they're killing the other cops. And he's freaking out, and he like shoots through the wall, and then he jumps through the wall, which is a really cool shot. I really like it. And he has to get through these challenges. Like the best fighter in the gang, they go two rounds, and he goes, Okay, if you could beat me in 20 seconds. I'll let two of them go. If I win, we kill two of them. And he, Jackie Chan loses twice, and he starts losing it, and he gets really emotional, and the acting is really good. Then the leader of the gang, they take apart the gun, and they have to put it back together quickly, and Jackie loses. So they kill two more. There's a really good explosion. They blow up the warehouse, and he's got to get out. Uh, there's some really good fire stunts. Now... The only thing I don't like about this movie is there is a bunch of shitty CGI. When Jackie Chan is on the rope and it's on fire, there is parts where it is CG. You could clearly tell that it's CGI. Um, when the explosion happens at the police station, it's all CG and it looks fucking terrible. There's parts when like the villains in the beginning are scaling down this building and it's all CG and it looks like dog shit. So there's a lot of bad CG in this movie. Which, you know, pisses me off and I'm sure it pisses all of you off too. Um, but that's, again, like the first like 30 minutes I think is the best part of the movie. And then the, you see Jackie all drunk and feeling sorry for himself and then he starts to get back up and then you have some, there's like a fight in a bar which is really good. Uh, the bus chase is a lot of fun because they go to like this BMX park and they track them down and they try to get away and they're climbing off the buildings and jumping off the buildings which is cool and then they hijack a bus so there's a bus chase 
and they got all these rubber duckies and it goes over and all the duckies go in the water. I always thought that was a really cool shot. Um, you know, I really like the ending. Again, they are in this bank and they're trying to rob it and they get the drop on them and then they like run next door and it's like Lego, like this Lego place and they're fighting and they're kicking over the Legos and the Legos are going everywhere and they like jump in the ball pit and the balls go everywhere and they're flipping and flying and it's really good fight choreography, really awesome stuff. Um, and then, you know, they fight on the roof. It reminded me of Who Am I, which I would say Who Am I is the last great Jackie Chan film from Hong Kong. Not going to lie. <laughs> Not going to lie about that. I think Who Am I was like the last essential, classic, must-see Jackie Chan film. Um, after that, I mean, I do like Accidental Spy. That's a lot of fun. Kind of more of the same at that point, though, to be honest. Um, I'd throw Chinese Zodiac in there. I'd throw this movie in there. So there you go. But they fight on the roof, and they play a game again, and Jackie gets the drop on the guy because he puts the bullet in the chamber instead of in the magazine and then the bad guy's defeated, and then it's like suicide by cop, which they definitely stole that from the falling down ending. You can't tell me that they did not do that. They clearly did. Um, but yeah. But there's a lot of really good stuff. And the movie's two hours, but it cuts at a good pace. It's not boring. There's action, and then there's some drama, and then there's action, and then there's some more drama, and then it, it goes along. And there is comedy, because... When Jackie and Nicholas C's character are getting out of jail, it's a really comedic scene where the guard, like, oops, and he drops the keys, and then the other lady leaves, and then they pick up the keys, and then they're going through, and the guy opens the door and looks at him, and then he goes back, and he's, like, checking the door, and he goes in, and then they go in, and then the room is full of cops, and they all look at each other, and then they go out, and it, so it has all of the Jackie Chan elements. It has the great action scenes. It has the comedy. It has the drama. Um, again, Jackie, some of the best acting he ever has done is in the first 30 minutes of the movie. And there's some good moments. Like, again, the scene with the bomb, he's getting really emotional. Some of the stuff at the end, he's getting emotional. So there is some really good stuff in here. And, of course, it has all the great fights. It has the great action. So, again... I've always really liked this. I will say that this is one of his best performances. Um, cannot complain about that. Nicholas C. does fine. Uh, Daniel Wu is great as the villain. Everybody else does fine in the film. Uh, Ken Lo is, is in this. Um, Brad Allen, because they were still on the stunt team at the time. They have like cameos in the movie, which is cool. Um, it's directed by Benny, uh, Benny Chan, who worked with Jackie Chan on some other stuff, which is nice. So, yeah, I do really like the song at the end, September Storm. I actually have that uh, here on my phone because I just pulled it off of YouTube. But at the end of the day, I have always really liked this movie. I think it is a really solid, really underrated Jackie Chan film. Um... You know, again, I know there's people out there that don't like it, but I've just, I think it's one of Jackie Chan's best movies. I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, a crime story. I would kind of put crime story in this, in the more dramatic Jackie Chan films. Hell, I'll even throw his performance in The Foreigner in there. You know, again, he was the really the only good thing about that movie. But I, I don't know. I just really, really enjoy this film. I always have. You know, ever since it came out in 2006, I was, what, 14? You know, I was in high school at the time. So, yeah, this is really solid. There is a really funny thing on the on the extra features. There's a little making of about the dubbing. And Jackie Chan is doing his lines, and he keeps screwing up, and he goes, I hate the English so much, and I just thought it was really funny because everybody just starts laughing. Um but hopefully, possibly, maybe, someday, one day, you know, 88 Films or Eureka or someone of the sort will get this a better Blu-ray because it definitely deserves more as far as I'm concerned. Again, I cannot say enough good things about this movie. I've always really liked it. I will continue to really like it. And it's a very solid Jackie Chan movie. Again, if you've never seen it, give it a look. It's for free here on YouTube. You can't pass it up. And... 
Hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. So there's that. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of New Police Story. Um, I do like it more than Police Story Lockdown. Police Story Lockdown was okay. Um, but it tried to do what this movie did, but this movie did it better. Because, you know, Jackie Chan was still young enough to do the classic big fights. Police Story Lockdown is okay. Um, there's some stuff I really like in that movie. If I ever find that for a couple bucks on Blu-ray, eh, yeah, I'll probably pick it up for the collection. I do think Jackie gives a good performance and there's some good things in it. Um, but this movie did it better. I, I can't complain about that. So yeah, but next up, the last movie that I'm going to review this go-around from Mule is another Jackie Chan film. It's a newer film. I haven't seen it yet. I I've been wanting to check it out because I did like the trailer. It's called Vanguard. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll talk at you later. See you.